Over the years, the people here, including you, this generation, have been so kind and so nice and forgiving when I mess up that I really and truly think of you as friends. So I say to you today, hi friends, believe me. It would be, uh, I guess the reason they would ask me to be here is to tell you how great the team is going to be in 2013. And I will tell you in all honesty, I don't have the slightest idea. As always, every year there are question marks, and then of course there's the unseen enemy. You can put together the finest team that money can buy, and you can come out of spring training all ready to go and someone gets hurt. And that's what happened last year with Matt Kemp and of course it changed the whole season. So if they come out of spring training and if they are blessed by staying healthy, it goes all the way. If they are blessed, this team can go all the way. Yeah! To try and increase the pleasure and the fun of the fan experience. So they're not saying they're going to do it. They don't have a Mao Zedong five-year plan. Now is the word. And so I really feel in my heart that they not only want to win, they want to win now, and they will do everything in their power to win now. All right. So if they come out of spring training and they're not quite satisfied, they are not going to sit on their hands. They are going to try very hard to make what you deserve to have here a winner. And you can bet they're going to do that to the best of their ability. Now, I thought if I don't sing a medley of my hits, <laughs> I, I would ask for a couple of questions. And yes, sir. Let me get. Thank you very much for one more year. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you. If I make it, it'll be number 64. Okay. Please God. Please God. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You have a question? Or do you want to leave the room? I... Yes, right here. As a Catholic, um, how much um, the Ignatius spirituality is part of you? Uh, my childhood? No, no, Ignatius spirituality, I know you went to Fordham, and that's a Jesuit institution. Oh, so my yeah. question is, um, as, a, as a devoted Catholic, as myself, how big is Ignatius spirituality part of you? Well, I t I'll tell you one thing about being me. raised, and this is not a religious answer to a religious question. Uh, when I was about seven and a half years old, uh, which was shortly after the discovery of fire. Uh, when I was about seven and a half, I wrote a composition for the nuns, what I want to be when I grow up. And I honestly wrote that I wanted to be a sports announcer, which was really unusual. In other words, in those days, the boys wanted to be firemen, policemen, doctors, and the girls wanted to be ballet dancers and nurses and all that. And here's this little red-headed kid saying that he wants to be a sports announcer. But here's the kicker. I wrote that composition left-handed. Now you might think this is prehistoric, but it was true. <laughs> when I was in Catholic grammar school, you were not allowed to be left-handed. Honest. And so every day I'd pick up the pen or whatever with my left hand and the good sweet nuns would come along whack with the ruler. And then one day I went home and we were having dinner or whatever and I was passing bread. Or something. And my mother saw this left hand and it had all been beaten up. And right away she assumed I had done something terribly wrong and I'd been punished. And she would have been right 99% of the time. However, not this time. And I told her, no, Mom, I'm being beaten up on his hand because they don't want me to be left-handed. So, our family doctor, who happened to be Jewish, which makes it even sweeter, he, he wrote of nuns, he wrote to the Catholic nuns, that if you force this little boy to be right-handed when he is born to be left-handed, he might stutter 
which would have changed my life dramatically. And then his last line of the nun was, and besides, dear sisters, why would you want to change God's work? Aha! Grand slam home run! So I, I was able to say left-handed. I don't know how many of you remember, it was a big movie, it won all the awards two years ago. It was called The King's Speech. Do you remember that? Where the King of England stuttered? Way back, 40 years ago, there was a man who wrote a book about King George the Sixth of England. And during the war, King George would tape a speech. And this man worked for the BBC. And what he would do is edit the speech. He would take out all the stuttering, put the speech together, and they would play it on the radio. And after a while, he got to thinking, wow, why in the world would the King of England be so frustrated, which is what they say causes stuttering? Well, when he checked, he found out, sure enough, that the King George VI of England was a natural left-hander and he was converted to being a right-hander, which is why he stunted. And if you saw the movie, there was only one mention of the fact, and it went like that, that he was left-handed and was forced to be right-handed. So I just thought I'd give you the, the impression the good nuns made on me, and the even better impression my Jewish doctor did to save the day. Yes. Uh, I, we have and into the World Series. And the first two games at, Yankee, at uh, Yankee Stadium, he was subdued. But he was here when Mickey Mantle hit a home run, and that put the Yankees ahead briefly, and it was the seventh inning, I think. I was supposed to go downstairs and do the post-game interview. But when Mantle hit the home run, Mel let it go going going gone and when he said gone his throat went he could not speak I, my heart broke for him i mean you can imagine uh this major stage and that happens to you and i've always kept that home run in mind there but for the grace of god could have gone on so that's number two the third home run in all of the thousand was that night in atlanta when Henry Aaron yeah. broke Babe Ruth's record with the home run against Al Downing. And when the home run was hit, the crowd went absolutely bananas, and I had a chance to just sit and gather my thoughts. I've always felt I like to call the play as quickly and accurately as I can, and then shut up, because how can you beat the roar of the crowd? You can't. And I sat there, and when the crowd finally quieted down, I realized what that home run did for me. And then I spoke from my heart and I said something to the effect. That was a great moment for Henry Aaron and his fans, great home run for Atlanta, and a great home run for the state. But more than that, it was a great home run for the United States of America. Because think about it, a black man is being honored in the deep south for hitting a home run to break the record of a white icon. Unbelievable moment. Probably the greatest single moment I've enjoyed in all my years in baseball. And then, of course, we come to the fourth and final home run. Yeah! What do you think it was? I look at it this way. It's, of all my years, it was my greatest single contribution to the Dodgers. Tell you why. We're in commercial, ready to go to the bottom of the ninth inning. I, I said to the producer, do me a favor, and you rarely do this, but I said, do me a favor. When we come out of commercial, follow me. Whatever I say, show it on camera. So we came out of commercial, and there was the Zeppelin up there looking down, etc. And I said, if you happen to be here with us tonight, the first thing you would do now is take your field glasses and look in the Dodger dugout. Wham! There's the dugout. And then as they call it, then the slow pan of the dugout. And then I finally said, well, there it is. It's obvious. Kirk Gibson will not play tonight. 
Little did I know that Gibby was in the clubhouse, sitting on a rubbing table in the trainer's room. He had ice bags on each leg, and he was looking at the monitor, and he was listening to me. And when I said, obviously, he will not play tonight, Gibby suddenly became emotional and hollowed, fertilizer! For <laughs> a reasonable fashion. So he told the kid in the clubhouse, run down and tell Tommy I'll be there in a minute. And sure enough, that great moment, out of the corner of my eye, I saw him with the bat as a cane, and I said, well, look who's here. And of course, the place went crazy, and I did say one little prayer. I don't think I've ever prayed for a player exactly, but I, my prayer was, he's had such a great year, he's done so well in getting us to the World Series, please God, don't let him strike out. Let him, let him you know, he's gonna make out, and he can't run, he could barely walk, so if you don't mind God, just don't let him make out in a nice way. And of course, he hits the home run, and there you go. So those are my four home runs. And I am looking forward to another exciting, dramatic, wonderful moment this year where one of the boys in blue hits one that really is a meaningful home run. And I hope you're there to enjoy it with yeah. me, okay? Yeah. I think I've done my number here. The next step, I start singing Irish ditties, and that, that would empty the room. So thank you for your attention. I really do appreciate it. For the last time today, I will talk to you soon, my friends.